All right, I think we can probably go ahead and start. Uh, my name is Mark Leggett. I'm the manager at Canary for the Research Data Management Program and also uh, the Executive Director for Research Data Canada. And uh, today's webinar is uh, to provide more information and background on the recently launched community consultation for research data management. And I'll get into those details, but a few uh, housekeeping pieces first. Uh, we are recording the session. Uh, and anybody who has signed up for the session will receive an email with the link to the archived webinar. And we will also be adding a link uh, together with a, a, some of the elements from the Q&A uh, to a web page on the Canary Research Data Management uh, website. Uh, so you'll also be able to access the link there. Uh, when we record, uh, the only uh, speaker uh, is myself and uh, colleagues at the Canary office, so uh, participants will not uh, have audio. Uh, so if you do have questions, uh, you can either type those into the chat window or you can use, uh, there should be a, an option in your Zoom menu to use the Q&A uh, component as well. So I will track both of those and I'll do my best uh, to respond to questions as they come up. Um, and I would also highlight that the any questions or interaction in the chat is not recorded, so that chat is not part of the, uh, the recorded webinar. Uh, I will conduct the webinar in English only, but uh, my colleague uh, Hervé Guy from Canary is uh, here today, and uh, Hervé will provide me with a translation of uh, questions, so please, if you have questions that you would rather uh, ask in French, then go ahead and type those in French in the chat or Q&A window. And Hervé will translate those to English for me. I will respond in English and uh, Hervé will provide a translation of my response as well for French. Uh, oui, uh, oui uh, mon nom c'est Hervé Guy à Canary et je suis là pour uh, assurer que le, toute uh, demande en français soit traduite et redirigée à, à Marc et Marc pourra vous répondre de la même manière. Merci. Thanks, Hervé. Uh, and uh, also for those uh, who had signed up, you should have also received a, a French version of uh, the slide deck so that you can follow along the version that I will have on the screen share uh, in French. And those will also, the French deck will also be available on the website. So this is the second of uh, two webinars. As I said, that will provide some background and allow participants to ask questions about the recently launched Research Data Management Community Consultation. So a little bit of background uh, first. And uh, for some of you on the call, this will be a, a somewhat familiar, but a new variation on the research data lifecycle and the uh, research data management uh, kind of context throughout that lifecycle. Uh, and this is pulled from a recent uh, report that was prepared by the Leadership Council for Digital Research Infrastructure. And again, it's the outer circles kind of just highlight um, the various high level stages in the research life cycle, whether you're just getting started on a new research project and they're in the planning stage, or you're creating research data, processing and analyzing that, uh, or into a dissemination stage where you're doing conference presentations and journal articles and hopefully making data sets available and through the uh, long-term preservation and subsequent reuse of that data. And this diagram is just intended to kind of highlight that throughout that life cycle, there are common services if you want or infrastructures, whether it's in the context of security or discovery, documentation and curation or storage to name uh, four. Uh, so those don't just happen at one stage in the life cycle, but uh, good data management practices um, are critical throughout the life cycle. Um, so this is just to highlight that aspect and the research data management program uh, that Canary has, uh, will be launching shortly is designed to fund the development of software components and tools, software platforms, tools, that would enable researchers to adopt best practices in data management and, for example, comply with uh, existing or emerging policy 
uh, that uh, applies to uh, research data throughout that workflow. In the Canadian context, our, we know that our funding agencies are working on draft uh, data management policies that would encourage uh, things like the deposit of data management plans and, and the deposit of data where it's appropriate. And in some cases, whether it's private or other types of public funds that are available, especially internationally, but in some cases in Canada already, uh, those funding agencies have uh, implemented mandates. So this uh, fund will provide up to $3 million for innovation uh, and support for services that, uh, that support researchers during that data life cycle in terms of managing their data. Uh, this is the, the first uh, call and it has a, a, a somewhat tight timeline and I will go into the timeline in more detail shortly. Uh, but once the uh, funding call launches, which we anticipate will be in early May, uh, and the submissions are reviewed and successful projects are selected and contracts are signed, then we anticipate that uh, funded projects will have 18 months uh, to carry out uh, the proposed projects. Now this, uh, so we're implementing this research data management program in two stages, and this is the first of those two stages. So we're calling it the community consultation, and as you can Imagine it's intended to solicit feedback from the community as to what they feel are, is important and maybe what could be a focus uh, for this funding that would be uh, available later in the year. In order to facilitate that, Canary has put together a research data management advisory committee. And the members of that committee come from uh, all the areas that you can well imagine uh, have a role to play. In this context, for example, if we're thinking of the university research context, then representatives from the vice president research, uh, CIO or computing center director office and the university library are all represented on that committee. As our colleagues from uh, the federal government uh, and other uh, organizations and agencies that will help us uh, determine uh, what should be a focus for this initial uh, pool of funds. So again, that, uh, this consultation uh, will help us identify priority areas. So what we're asking uh, members of the community to do and it, anybody who has an interest or a role to play in data management in the Canadian context uh, would be asked to provide a sense of what the gaps and opportunities are. In order to kind of frame that conversation and facilitate that, that feedback uh, and uh, assist in that process, Canary has decided to, to kind of base the consultation questions uh, and the consultation in the FAIR principles, which I'll again co go into in more detail shortly, and also a Research Data Canada document that was produced last year uh, called Data Innovation in Canada. So those are simply designed to uh, provide a little bit of context uh, for the call and encourage um, the organizations and individuals that do respond uh, to consider feedback that intersects with those. So this slide gives you uh, a high level uh, sense of the seven question areas that are in the feedback form. Uh, we're trying to facilitate not just the uh, submission of feedback but also the review of that feedback. So the form uh, allows uh, somewhere in the range of uh, 900 to 1,000 words in the total form, and each of these seven areas uh, has a restriction within that total. Um, so again, uh, we, we hope that will help people uh, focus their, their feedback. If uh, there is more than one gap or opportunity that uh, you or your organization has, then you can always submit more than one uh, submission, provide more than one uh, piece of feedback. When you do access the, the tool that we've made available, uh, then we'll ask you to describe the gap or opportunity in research data management that you feel is important, uh, how it supports those FAIR principles, what specific stakeholder groups uh, would benefit uh, if that gap or opportunity was, uh, was filled or satisfied, how that particular um, 
uh, approach would contribute to or strengthen what we call the National Data Services Framework in Canada. This, co this phrase or concept of national data services is not, um, has not often been used in the Canadian context. It's much more frequently used uh, in the US and Europe and other countries. Um, and so what we're trying to do here is highlight that um, certainly in this round of funding in this context, we're looking for uh, gaps and opportunities and subsequent solutions in the funding call that address research data management best practices uh, in a national context. And again, somewhat in, in line with that is uh, how such a, uh, a service, for example, would be interoperable with existing data platforms or services internationally. How this uh, solution, or if this gap were addressed, how it would increase innovation and discovery in Canada, especially as it relates to open science. Uh, many of you will see increasing reference, uh, especially from our federal governments and universities and funding agencies uh, to this concept of open science, which first and foremost, I would, I would say, is a gen generic term that is intended to address research in all of the disciplines, whether that be humanities, social sciences, or science. Uh, so even though open science tends, it seems uh, like some of us to omit areas of research, it uh, explicitly does not. I think it's just the, the nature of the phrase and the fact that it has become kind of a de facto phrase to designate um, research that is done uh, with an approach to making the results and the, and the data openly available. And then finally, we'll ask people to address uh, the issue of sustainability uh, if such a, uh, an approach were to be supported. So a little more detail, and again, I would encourage um, people, if you do have questions, uh, feel free to uh, type them into the chat or Q&A window, and uh, I'll do my best to respond to the questions uh, at the time they're asked, because uh, that's often the, the best way to address uh, the question. So the FAIR principles, FAIR stands for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And this is a set of principles that was developed uh, by a group of people that represents all of the stakeholders in the community. One of the proponents, for example, was a, uh, a researcher or is a researcher um, who was interested in ensuring that the material that he produced and his colleagues produced were uh, openly available and accessible to each other. Um, so this, uh, there are three to four principles within each of those four categories. And they were uh, articulated and designed to express principles that would be implementable both uh, by human services and I think more, uh, almost uh, more importantly by machine services. So the goal here was to uh, highlight best practices that could be implemented within, uh, for example, software frameworks. And uh, you can see from, by, for example, just looking in the findable section, it refers to meta, metadata and data as having globally unique and eternally persistent IDs. Um, for many of us, that's a, a best practice, not, not necessarily always um, something that is done. So that's one example of a fair principle that could clearly be supported uh, through any uh, number of human services, whether it be education or uh, support in how to uh, create persistent IDs to software services that would mint uh, things like persistent IDs. So addressing how particular gaps and opportunities intersect with the FAIR principles will be a very important part of the community consultation. And as I said, the other kind of key foundational concept underneath this is what, what we would refer to as a national data services framework. And a national data service is, is simply uh, a service that provides one or more data related functions to stakeholders uh, in the disciplines and, and in a specific national context. Uh, it's sometimes a little challenging to figure out how to think about national data services, uh, but uh, the three levels that I highlight in this slide are sometimes a good way to kind of get started in thinking about it. And one, of, one level in which to think of national data services is a conversational context. Uh, 
So how could a locally produced service or uh, best practice or software service uh, be made more accessible in a national context? That's a, a conversation. Um, the best practices and standards-based context. Uh, so how can the services and software uh, resources and, and infrastructure that we develop uh, adopt best practices to ensure that they are in fact interoperable nationally? Uh, and it can refer uh, at the third level ver to a very discrete suite of services and resources that do function nationally in supporting uh, data management. So the goal with um, this Canary Research Data Management funding call is to support stakeholders in the ecosystem uh, in making their data open and fair. And a national data service doesn't mean that a piece of software is developed and or functions only at a national level. It could clearly be uh, something that surfaces nationally by aggregating services or content or infrastructure that is developed and maintained uh, locally or provincially or regionally. Uh, so a national data service is, is, is first and foremost uh, a collaboration between the various groups that provide these services. So just to give you, this slide is intended to kind of intersect the FAIR principles with the concepts and some of the services that might come within a national data services framework. Um, so again, you can see that familiar term in the upper left with identifiers. There are things that make uh, research data more findable, such as enriching metadata. So, you know, there's a lot of interest these days in uh, using artificial intelligence and other types of machine learning approaches to automatically enrich uh, information about data sets or scholarly outputs. So all of these elements um, that are articulated in those uh, FAIR principles can very nicely intersect with actual services um, that uh, support the concepts within those FAIR principles. Uh, so we hope that um, by, by providing those two foundational concepts of the FAIR principles and the National Data Services Framework that it will help people respond to the community consultation uh, with details about what they feel are critical uh, components for the Canadian ecosystem. And in that, um, in that, uh, so actually maybe I'll just pause here again to highlight that if uh, people have any questions uh, or comments, then please go ahead and type them into the, the chat window or or the Q&A. Um, and I'm just going to throw out a few questions that have either come up with the Canary team or that we thought would be, um, we anticipated might be of interest to uh, members of the stakeholder community. So the first one is, can anyone submit a response to the consultation? And the answer is yes. Anyone in Canada uh, with an understanding of or an interest in the software tools and infrastructure that facilitates a more effective approach to managing data uh, from publicly funded research is encouraged. Uh, we're interested in hearing from individuals. Uh, so for example, if I was a researcher at a particular organization, I may be interested in submitting feedback that addresses what I feel are important gaps in my particular domain of practice. Uh, but I may also act in a capacity within my university organization that would encourage a response from the context of my university. Uh, so I think that that, um, again, we're encouraging responses that reflect both the personal and uh, the institutional context of data management. Um, so maybe I'll just, um, and uh, what I'll do is, um, I'll read the question in English and then uh, allow Hervé to uh, turn on his audio to read it in French and then I'll go ahead with the English response. So one of the questions is, can we assume that data can be in any form, numeric, text, audio, and video? Uh, Hervé, do you want to go ahead and uh, do the French? Uh, sorry, could you repeat the question? Uh, well, uh, I was talking with my colleague here. Oh, sorry. Uh, can we assume that data can be in any form, numeric, oh. 
texte, audio ou vidéo. OK. Pouvons-nous assumer que les datas sont dans n'importe quel format, comme le texte, audio, etc.? And so the response to that would be absolutely. Uh, research data management, especially since we're talking about uh, research in any of the disciplines, uh, from humanities to social sciences and science, uh, I think it's safe to say that the data that we need to manage uh, and steward uh, can be in any form. And uh, Hervé, did you want to... Not sure if this is the best approach, so if you want to do the questions at the end, just let me know. OK, la, la, la question, la deuxième question, c'est est-ce qu'il y a une, une organisation sans but non lucratif euh, avec un partenaire à, aux États-Unis euh, pourrait soumettre une proposition? Ah. Uh. Yes, yeah, sorry, I've got, I've got my English-French translation part turned around. Sorry, I will continue with the, uh, respond to the English questions uh, just in English. And uh, if you have questions in French, then please uh, go ahead and ask them. Sorry, Hervé, I got my uh, translation procedure mixed up. Um, another question, can a nonprofit uh, in the U.S. partner with a Canadian organization or institution to submit a response? Uh, the answer would be that only Canadian uh, organizations can provide feedback in the consultation and of course only Canadian organizations would be eligible to apply for funds. Uh, having said that, there is no reason why uh, a feedback uh, during this consultation stage could not consider and include uh, feedback uh, that is uh, submitted in, in co coordination with a U.S. partner. Um, and there are a specific uh, funding rules uh, that Canary has once funds are released that govern how, how funds are expended uh, in an international context. But generally, funds are only available for work carried out in a Canadian context. Um, the other question we had was, uh, what sort of entity can receive the funding? Uh, It's pretty much any organization, Canadian organization outside of federal government agencies. Um, so universities, colleges, uh, nonprofits, commercial organizations, uh, collaborations between multiple types of organizations. Uh, so if you uh, are an individual in any of those types of organizations, then uh, you could act uh, as a PI uh, and pull together a team that could respond. Um, this next question that was just typed in is a long one, so I'm just going to cover the next, uh, next question first and then uh, come back to that one. Um, we use, you'll notice that we use the, the phrase gaps and opportunities uh, in the documentation a lot, and that's because we want to highlight that we're not just interested in what we would traditionally kind of refer to as gaps in the ecosystem, things that are kind of holding back the use of best practices in the data management context, uh, but we're also interested in emerging uh, opportunities, technologies, uh, approaches uh, that we could, uh, we could grasp as a way to uh, move uh, the management of research data forward uh, in some interesting ways. So that's why we use the phrase gaps and opportunities. Um, one of the questions uh, is, uh, So far, I haven't heard anything about uh, research data usage tracking, a scenario that they encountered in the biological data involved a paper from 20 years ago that was widely cited, but eventually superseded and uh, even withdrawn by the authors. Today, the paper's data continues to be cited, even though the data is no longer consider considered valid. Is usage tracking considered important? Um, The simple answer to that question is, if you think it's important, then I think it's important to submit that as feedback. Um, how research data, I mean, this question gets at a lot of concepts, whether it's the uh, how data is um, made available, whether data is updated, uh, what, what do you do when uh, papers or data sets need to be retracted or updated, Uh, how do you cite dynamic data sets? 
So there's a lot of elements that could come into this, this concept. So I think ultimately at the higher level, it gets at that question of how do we make data uh, reusable? Uh, and uh, this has one particular side of that question uh, and that relates to uh, the nature of the data and whether or not it's uh, been superseded or there's a newer version of the data set. And I think there are best practices uh, in the research data management community that are designed to address a number of those. Um, so as I said, I think the answer to that question ultimately is if the community feels that those are important, uh, then I think that will come through in the consultation and uh, that will be addressed and uh, uh, in the narrative for the subsequent funding call. Another potential question is, uh, do we have to provide details of projects that we think could fill the gaps? Um, and the answer to that is, if possible, we're not at this community consultation stage. We're looking at a higher level description of what people feel are important gaps and opportunities that need to be addressed. We don't necessarily need to know how those are going to be, uh, how those could be addressed. Uh, unless the submitter feels that an existing project or a particular approach that has been developed or uh, that they've thought of uh, would help uh, in describing that gap or opportunity to the reviewers that will, will look at that material. And it also highlights the other important point in all this, and that is that at this point in time, we're seeking uh, feedback from the community as to what they feel is important uh, and it's only after the launch of the f actual funding call in May that we'll be looking for specific project proposals that would outline uh, the details of how they would propose uh, to fill a potential gap. Um, another question is, can I submit by email? We have a, uh, an online tool called SurveyMonkey App Apply, which will allow not just submitters to provide their feedback, but also reviewers uh, to take a look at that feedback. Um, so uh, we ask that people use that system. If you do have problems with the SurveyMonkey Apply system, then you can contact rdm at canary.ca and the team there will facilitate whatever uh, challenge you're having and try to work that out. <coughs> kind of coming back to one of the earlier questions, uh, Will consultation submissions determine funded projects? And the answer to that is no. At this point in time, we're looking at feedback on the gaps and opportunities for research data management services and infrastructure in Canada. Uh, and that will not only inform uh, the May uh, funding call launch, but will also uh, hopefully inform subsequent activities and activities that are carried out uh, by colleagues and, and uh, others in the Canadian community who do provide support for research data management. Uh, sorry, and I should, uh, on that question, I just another way that that was asked on Tuesday in the first consultation was, uh, will it help me get a funding if I submit a pr uh, feedback in the community consultation stage? And again, my response to that would be a no, other than that it highlights um, that that particular uh, gap or opportunity is important to the community, and therefore it may show up as a focus uh, in, the, in the subsequent call uh, for those funding proposals. But it will not, you don't have to submit uh, feedback in the community consultation uh, to uh, submit a proposal. Uh, are we interested in particular domains of research? Uh, the answer is no, we're interested in all research disciplines and domains. Um, articulated gaps could address one specific domain. For example, the question I just read out uh, talked about um, data in the biological uh, biosciences sector. Um, so that's important to identify gaps and opportunities in individual domains, but we're also interested at a higher level in gaps that exist across the, uh, across the ecosystem. And I would also say as, um, as somebody who's worked with researchers for, for many years, uh, you'd be surprised at how best practices or approaches and standards in one discipline uh, can inform uh, approaches in another. <clears throat> 
So I think it's important to uh, to hear what people think uh, in each discipline and across all uh, disciplines. Uh, another question, final question that we had as a as an example is: Can multiple individuals or institutions be associated with one submission? And again, the answer is yes. Um, that can be articulated in the text, but given the the uh, the word limits, probably the best way to indicate that there are multiple institutions uh, interested in the particular feedback uh, is the opportunity you have to add additional emails in the form to copy the submission to colleagues, which is also clearly an indication that um, uh, the submission uh, was, uh, was, was done by a group uh, of collaborators. And as I mentioned before, once you're into the uh, SurveyMonkey apply system, you will be able to click on, and it, it is also designed, the same tool will be used for the funding proposal stage. So the word apply in this context is probably a little bit of a, a misnomer because here we're looking for feedback. Uh, but each time you click that apply button, uh, you can fill out a separate uh, submission to the, the feedback stage. Uh, another question is, will any gap that we point out in the consultation be explicitly identified in the funding call so that other groups can jump in and submit proposals for that gap too? So what will happen, um, it's a good question. Um, each of the, as you can well imagine, the feedback that we receive could be very high level and it could be very, very detailed, uh, addressing a, a very specific gap in a very specific context. So once the Research Data Management Advisory Committee has an opportunity to review all of the submissions, then the Canary team will work with that feedback from you the, in the community, as well as the advisory committee to create a narrative that highlights what uh, the advisory committee felt were the priorities that were uh, articulated and identified in that feedback process. Um, so those priority areas will form part of the public narrative that goes out with the, the launch of the funding call. Um, so if, let's just say that the gap addressed was the, um, to e make it easy to create um, persistent IDs for data sets in the biosciences as uh, one of the questions that was posed. Um, if that was identified as, as, as a gap, then that would be articulated as and as a priority. Then that would be articulated in the funding call, so others could see that 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 gap was of interest. Um, now that's a very specific example. Uh, the focus that we, uh, the various areas that we identify for focus in the funding call will be uh, a, at a higher level, um, so they won't be at that same level of detail. But that's just by way of saying that. Um, any of the information that comes out uh, in the consultation call that makes it into that document will be available to everybody. Another question, will a summary report of the gaps and opportunities identified in the submissions be released? Um, the simple answer is yes, it will be released in the form of the public consultation call. Um, the uh, Canary and the advisory committee are still because this is the first time we've done this and we haven't yet seen the submissions, um, whether or not there's an opportunity to produce uh, something else outside of the document that uh, frames that funding call, we're not sure. Uh, it may well be that we're able to uh, provide all the detail that's needed uh, in that uh, call document. Um, so I guess the, the, the simple answer is we're not sure yet. Um, but it certainly will be available in the form of the document that comes out to announce the call. Uh, another question is, does a focus on supporting national data services mean that software with international importance is less favored? Uh, absolutely not. Um, I think whether we're talking about services at the local, provincial, regional, national, or international level, um, I think all of those uh, levels are, are important in the provision of data services. I think the important probably characteristic for something that uh, functions say at the international level is how that part, how that intersects with 
similar services in the national context? Um, and does it provide uh, a Canadian research community uh, with access to resources, infrastructure, or best practices that uh, are important in that uh, national uh, context here in Canada? And you will maybe also remember that one of the questions in the form does ask uh, how the proposed gap or opportunity intersects with international uh, services and best practices as well. So we're certainly uh, interested in and uh, understand that uh, intersections at the international level are, uh, are pretty important. Uh, just a little bit more detail on the timeline. Um, while well, people consider any other questions they may have. Uh, the consultation launched on January 10th. Uh, the deadline for receipt of submissions is the 15th of February. Uh, so by the end of business day on the 15th, uh, submissions will have to be received. Um, and they, because after that point, they will no longer be, uh, uh, submissions will no longer be allowed. So I just want to highlight that that is a, uh, a tight deadline or a firm deadline, I should say. Um, during, uh, after the 15th and up until early March, uh, the review of submissions will happen. And then that review of submissions will result, uh, in, as I referred to earlier, the creation of a narrative that will form the basis of the funding call, which will happen in early May. Uh, those details again, will, uh, just to come back to one of the earlier questions, uh, will hopefully provide the, the broader community with um, all the detail that we can provide in terms of uh, what we receive. Uh, the submission period for the calls will be from early May towards the end of June. Uh, so a substantial amount of time to uh, craft a proposal for funding. Uh, those submissions will then be considered by a separate Canary Research Advisory Committee. Uh, which also reviews proposals for the Canary Research Software Program. And those reviews will happen in the June, August timeline. And then subsequent to the selection of, of projects that, uh, that would be funded and contract negotiations, uh, funds would be ready to flow to individual projects in October. Uh, with the uh, end of March, 2020 as the end of the funded period. Uh, so a couple more questions. Um, the, when thinking about a national data services framework, is the audience restricted to researchers associated with higher education institutions and government? Or can we assume that services will be publicly available in the spirit of open scholarship? Um, any um, software or components developed with Canary funding as with the research software program uh, have to be made uh, openly accessible, publicly accessible. Um, so in terms of software services or software code, uh, that would be made openly accessible. Um, and I would highlight that uh, we are by no means limiting or restricting the audience of either this community consultation or the subsequent funding call to researchers associated with higher education or government. Um, I've had questions from a number of nonprofit organizations uh, that um, either produce or are substantial consumers of research data uh, and uh, certainly highlighted that uh, there's an interesting hearing from everybody uh, in the ecosystem. Uh, so that's it for the official part of the slide deck. Um, we do have um, lots of time for other questions or comments uh, that people may have. Um, so I'll just pause and uh, see if anybody else has any questions. And I'm just going to, while we're thinking about that, I'm just going to go back to one of the illustrations there to provide the people with that context. Uh, I will again highlight that the, um, the archive webinars 
and uh, the questions uh, that are asked both uh, individually of Canary staff and uh, during these webinars. Uh, most of them will be posted to uh, a public web page so that uh, the full community can see what kinds of questions were asked and what um, the responses are. So we certainly are working on those as we receive them. Um, and we'll let uh, stakeholders know if you come back to that research data management uh, website on the Canary page. And when you go to canary.ca, uh, RDM is one of the uh, program areas just under the masthead. Uh, so you can click on RDM and get access to all the material. And I don't see any other questions uh, in the chat or Q&A. And I don't think I missed any. Um, and hopefully I responded to the the questions that were asked appropriately. If uh, I would also encourage uh, any of you that have additional questions afterwards, you can send your questions to that rdm at canary.ca email address and uh, the, the Canary team that is working with this call uh, has access to that and will respond uh, depending on the nature of the question. Um, So I think that's it. If um, there are no further questions, then uh, I would call the webinar to a close and thank everybody for attending and uh, thank my colleague Hervé for responding <laughs> in quick order to my misinterpretation of the uh, translation services. and. Uh, Thanks everybody for attending and we look forward to uh, seeing your submissions in the uh, survey tool. Thank you.